Nutrient poor diets can lead to inflammation, breakouts, and premature aging of the skin. We can turn to skincare products, but many of these simply can't reach the deeper layers of the skin. So for step one in our skincare regimens, we should look at what's on our plates rather than what's on our bathroom shelves. In this video, I'll cover everything you need to know about how best to eat to support your skin. I'm gonna reveal two things I would avoid and five key principles that you need to be working into your diet to support your skin. This video is also going to be part of a skin series where I'm gonna dive even deeper into the role of diet and acne, psoriasis, rosacea, and eczema. So if this is of interest to you, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those videos when they're released. And if you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. First off, there's two things that I need you to know. Number one is that skin has a 28 day cycle. So once you change your diet, you may not see changes overnight, but in about a month's time, you'll really start to see that glow. Second is that diet is only one part of the puzzle. Hormones, genetics, sleep, and stress all come into play when it comes to skin. Good or bad skin is rarely caused by diet alone. Now I'm gonna start with the negative and give you two things that I would avoid when it comes to your skin, or at the very least, take a moderate approach. And the first one is alcohol. Alcohol is pro-inflammatory and it's dehydrating. Plus, when we drink, we tend to eat more poorly and not sleep as well. And all of these things have a negative impact on the skin. A study that included more than 3,000 women found that those who drank eight standard drinks a week, which is the equivalent of one bottle of wine, were more likely to have fine lines and wrinkles on their upper face, forehead, and around the eyes. They also had more mid-face volume loss and more visible blood vessels. And a bottle of wine a week isn't that much to many people. And alcohol can also flare up pre-existing conditions like eczema and rosacea. But a biggie here is that alcohol wrecks havoc on your hormones and particularly your sleep. And at night when you sleep, you produce growth hormones. And this is the time where your skin regenerates and skin turnover is at its highest, which renews your cells, but drinking can disrupt this process. So we really do need to be protecting our sleep. Also, if you're sleep deprived, a stress hormone called cortisol can increase. And we know that stress worsens many skin conditions. It can lead to breakouts and flare ups of conditions like psoriasis. The next thing that I would avoid is very low calorie or restrictive diets. This might sound obvious, but hear me out. When we eat, our body prioritizes prioritizes ascending the nutrition to your brain and to your heart. Then it goes to your liver, your kidney, your muscles, your bone, and then finally your skin. So it's the last place to get nutrition. So this means you need to have good nutrition coming in if you want to get those nutrients into lovely, healthy, glowing skin. And not only if you're not eating enough, but if you're removing a particular food group, the skin will likely suffer. The first sign of any deficiency is most likely seen on the skin, hair, and nails. For example, vitamin B12 deficiency is common among those who cut out dairy or they follow a vegan diet. And this can often present with cracked or sore edges around the side of someone's mouth. And when low fat diets were very trendy, it was common to see people with much drier skin. And even with the opposite, with the high fat keto diets, they can cause a very itchy rash known as keto rash. And it's a direct result of skipping carbohydrates. And this causes the skin to become inflamed and it triggers red blotches and bumps to start to appear. But the solution is easy, you reintroduce carbohydrates. Now moving on to the positives, what to add in for glowing skin. And I have five key principles. But first, I'm gonna stop here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel so I can continue making more videos. And while you're at it, you can give the video a thumbs up too. So principle number one is supporting your skin structure with protein. In particular, we want to support the collagen network that we have in our skin. So collagen is the most abundant protein in the skin. But as we age, our bodies make less collagen. From the age of 20, we start to lose about 1% of collagen in our skin per year. And after menopause, falling estrogen levels lead to a further reduction in collagen production. And as these levels drop over time, our skin loses its elasticity. And this results in the skin losing its bounce and becoming more susceptible to wrinkle formation. So let's explore how to support our skin's collagen through our food choices. First, we simply need to be eating enough protein. And this is the most important thing. Protein helps ensure that our body has enough of the building blocks that it needs in order to make collagen. Check out this video here if you want to know more about exactly how much protein you should be eating. But the good news is that our bodies can make collagen. So we don't need to go out and look for collagen sources in our food. Our bodies can naturally make the collagen by taking amino acids from other protein sources. So you can be a vegan, a vegetarian, or or a meat eater and still be in a good position to support collagen production just by eating a wide range of protein containing foods. That can be things like beans, peas, lentils, chickpeas, can also be dairy, meat, eggs, and tofu. 
So number two, we've established that our bodies can make the collagen, but they do also need certain vitamins and minerals to help support with this. And this includes vitamin C and vitamin E. These are critical players in stimulating collagen production. Food sources that are rich in vitamin E include almonds, sunflower seeds, peanuts, avocados, and dark green leafy veg. And vitamin C, you can find it in citrus fruits and peppers and broccoli. Then we have collagen supplements. I have a full video on these here if you want to learn more. So collagen supplements are very on trend these days with every wellness influencer on on the internet promoting them. And what I will say is that they do hold promise. All the studies are pointing towards positive effects on the skin. However, the studies have been mainly funded by collagen companies, and we still don't know the best type, dose, or duration that you need to be taking them to have an effect. And because they are expensive, I don't recommend them right now. But if you are interested, do check out that video, where I go through how to choose the best one with the most evidence behind it if you do decide to take one. The next principle is moisturizing your skin from within. Low levels of fat in your diet, particularly omega-3 fats, can contribute to dehydrated, flaky skin and dry hair and nails. And the best source of omega-3 in our diet is oily fish. Oily fish tends to be the colored fish, so think of your salmon, mackerel, herring, trout, and sardines. And they help maintain healthy skin moisture levels, supporting the skin barrier. They contribute to the natural oils produced in the skin, which offer smoothing and softening benefits by coating the outer layer of the skin and preventing moisture loss. And due to their anti-inflammatory properties, they are also important for conditions such as dermatitis, psoriasis and acne. Now there are plant sources of omega-3 such as walnuts and flax seeds but they are not as well utilized by the body as oily fish. So that really is the best source and because of this it is one scenario where I do recommend a supplement if you don't consume at least one serving of oily fish a week. And when choosing a supplement you want one with both EPA and DHA at a dose of around four to five hundred milligrams daily. And if you're a vegan you can get supplements sourced from algae. Drinking enough water and staying hydrated is also essential for your skin health, but it can be overhyped. I remember as a teenager being told that the more water you could drink, the more it would flush out your skin and eliminate all your acne. But drinking four or five or more gallons of water a day will not do this. Now, drinking water can help with your skin hydration, but only if you're dehydrated in the first place. Overhydrating won't provide any additional benefit. That said, it is important to keep adequately hydrated. The best way to tell if you're drinking enough is to look at your urine, and it should be a pale yellow color. Now, we may not think that what is going down deep inside our gut is going to impact our skin, but it can. Research, in fact, is showing that that is where the key to glowing skin lies. The gut is home to trillions of microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, and viruses. And these are collectively known as the gut microbiome. And over the last decade, an explosion of research has linked the gut microbiome to almost every aspect of health, including depression to being able to manage your weight and reduce food cravings. But the exciting news is that we do have power to influence our gut microbiome directly through the foods that we eat. We may be unable to change our genetics, but we can change our gut composition. Regarding a healthy gut microbiome, there are two things that we want to be looking out for. The first is balance. We want to have plenty of healthy, good gut bacteria and less of the not so good guys. Then we also want diversity. We want a wide range of different species of bacteria in our gut. And the the main ways that we can achieve this is by number one, eating enough fiber. We want to be eating at least 25 grams of fiber daily. Secondly, we want lots of variety in terms of plant foods, at least 30 different plant foods a week, according to the American Gut Project. 30 plants a week might seem like a lot, but it's easier than you think. This number isn't restricted to just fruits and vegetables. It also includes whole grains, oils, nuts and seeds, spices, and even coffee. But if you are the kind of person who eats almonds and blueberries every single week, week. Start trying to mix it up a bit more. Buy a bag of mixed nuts or a bag of mixed frozen berries to get in more variety. An imbalance of gut bacteria, known as dysbiosis, has been linked to several common skin conditions, such as acne, rosacea, eczema, and psoriasis. The theory is that our gut bacteria produce these compounds known as short chain fatty acids, and these have anti-inflammatory effects. Then, if you have less of these good anti-inflammatory bacteria, you'll therefore have more inflammation. Another likelihood is that our gut is involved in training the immune system. So, when out of balance, the immune system can also go out of whack, and that can take the form of skin conditions like eczema and psoriasis. I'm often asked if probiotic supplements will help with the skin, but the reality is that at the moment, we don't have evidence to recommend specific probiotics for skin health in particular. Probiotics cover a huge range of different types of bacteria in different quantities. usprobioticguide.com is an excellent place to go for looking at probiotics if you are interested, as there is evidence for probiotic use in other scenarios, but we just don't know yet enough for recommending ones to help with the skin. There is promising research looking at probiotics for treating acne, but it's still in its early phases. So instead, try to choose probiotic containing foods like live yogurts and kefir. 
now we're going to look at sebum production in the skin. So sebum is an oily substance needed to lubricate the skin, but too much can lead to skin congestion, ultimately making skin more prone to breakouts. And natural fluctuations in hormones can impact our sebum levels, but it's suspected that our food choices can too, especially diets that are rich in added sugars or carbohydrates that turn into sugars quickly. And these are what we call high glycemic foods. These can be found in things like sugar sweetened beverages, refined grains, sweets, cakes, and biscuits. And since these foods break down into sugar quickly, the amount of sugar in the blood also increases quicker. And this increases hormone levels like insulin and insulin growth factor, which may stimulate more sebum production and therefore breakouts in some susceptible people. Foods that are digested slower with a slower release of energy, such as whole grains are called low glycemic foods. And these have displayed positive impacts on the skin. Research is also showing that if we consume excessive amounts of sugar, it can reach the dermis and form molecules known as advanced glycation end products or AGEs. And these can damage collagen and elastin, causing them to stiffen, resulting in premature aging of the skin, or what many call a skin sag. So a diet very high in refined and added sugars will quite literally age you. And certain methods of food preparation, like barbecue and grilling and frying, also produce much higher levels of these AGEs than water-based cooking methods like boiling and steaming. Now, please don't misinterpret any of this point as eliminate all sugar from your diet and start trying to remove all fruit and carbohydrates. It's only excessive amounts of added sugar that we should be trying to moderate in our diet anyway. This brings me to my final principle, glowing with greens and colorful plates. Now, while sunscreen is essential, it isn't the only way that we can fight free radical damage in our skin. Within the skin are powerful compounds called antioxidants that can neutralize the effects of free radicals produced by UV exposure before they start to cause harm. Going back to collagen, we've covered that we can build it, but we must also protect the collagen that we have. And collagen loss can be accelerated by UV light. So with antioxidants, we can put them topically on our skin, like a vitamin C serum, but you can also consume them through your diet. And this will further help mitigate the effect of free radicals on your skin. And diets rich in antioxidants have been linked with having a positive impact on our skin's elasticity, smoothness, and color. And each colored fruit or veg has a different potency and array of different vitamins vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. So if you're missing a color, you're likely missing out on some of the benefits. Even dark chocolate contains flavonoids, an antioxidant that may help protect the skin. And if you didn't know, one of the most evidence-based skincare products, retinol, is in fact vitamin A. So aiming to get lots of color into your diet will be hugely beneficial for your skin and your overall general health too. A diet with lots of color is also likely to be anti-inflammatory. And most skin conditions like acne and psoriasis are inflammatory in nature. So eating in this way will be really helpful. If you want to learn even more about following an anti-inflammatory diet plan, you can check out this video here, which has a free 10-step guide attached to it. So in summary, we want to be mindful of alcohol and steering clear of low-calorie diets. We want to make sure we're getting enough protein for our skin's structure and be consuming a protein source at each main meal. To moisturize our skin from within, we want at least one serving of oily fish a week or else maybe considering an omega-3 supplement. We want to optimize our gut health by making sure we're having at least 25 grams of fiber every day and 30 different plant foods every single week. We want to be mindful of having too many added sugars in our diet and choosing lower glycemic index foods more often. And we want lots of colors to get in lots of antioxidants. Now there's so much more about nutrition and skin that I want to cover in terms of diet and acne and psoriasis and eczema and so on. So I'm going to make full videos about these skin conditions. So please comment below with any questions that you would like me to address. I can also share my skincare regimen. Let me know in the comments if that sounds interesting. And for making it all the way to the end of the video, I want to thank you by letting you know that I have a free recipe ebook which I've linked in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching. Stay happy and healthy and I'll see you again next week.